Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. If you missed it last week, I suggest going back and checking the in-depth benchmark video that we put up, uh, which compared all the current generation GPUs in a good list of games. I think it was about 16 games in total, all which were 2016 releases. And yeah, like I said, we compared all the current generation GPUs. But in that video, I didn't go into too much depth at the end of sort of to say which GPU I picked to be the winner at each sort of price category. And as a result, quite a few of you asked me to create a shorter video. So that is a video that isn't 20 minutes long. And uh, just give my personal sort of opinions and picks at each price category as to which GPU is the best. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, so let's get on with it. Right now is actually a really good time to make some picks, and not just because I recently completed over 1500 benchmark runs. At this point, product availability is good for both companies, and consumers can easily pick up a graphics card at the advertised MSRP. So it'll be nice to make some recommendations without having to take inflated prices into account. The following GPU picks are based primarily on that data gathered from the current generation GPU benchmark video just mentioned. Uh, but some of my own personal preferences at each price point will help me determine or will weigh on my picks. So keep that in mind. And when my sort of personal preferences do come up, I will discuss those. Anyway, let's get on with it, starting with what I like to call the entry level GPUs. For those with roughly $100 to spend, you have the choice of either the RX 460 or GTX 1050. For me, the GeForce GTX 1050 2GB seems like the obvious choice here. It was 13% faster at 1080p in our recent benchmark video, and given it costs just 10% more, that gives it a slightly better cost per frame ratio. That said, with such a small margin, you could really go either way. The reason I'm going green here is down to the fact that the GTX 1050 is actually a greener product, consuming less power despite being faster. Also, a big win for me is the fact that in order to extract maximum performance from this graphics card, an external power connector isn't required. Some will no doubt argue that the RX 460 unlock, which boosts performance by roughly 5%, makes it a better buy. Well, in my opinion, it doesn't. Yes, if the unlock does work, you can look forward to up to 5% more performance, but with AMD effectively blocking the unlock with their relive drivers, it just isn't worth the hassle in my opinion. So let's lock in the GTX 1050 and move on. Moving on to what I'm calling the budget mid-range segment, we have a rather open and shut case. For months now, we've been calling the RX 470 the best value mid-range contender, and with AMD's improved relive drivers and Nvidia's unwillingness to drop prices of the GTX 1060 3GB, it remains the value champ. In short, the RX 470 4GB is just 5% slower than the GTX 1060 3GB, while it's priced 15% lower. Meanwhile, the 1050 Ti gets touched up worse than any race car driven by Richard Hammond. It's a complete write-off when looking at the cost per frame ratios. The 1050 Ti is over 30% slower and less than 20% cheaper. For those of you who are wondering, should you buy the 8GB version of the RX 470? Short answer, hell no. That would be a worse decision than the hamster climbing back into another rocket car. Although the RX 470 really isn't a great deal slower than the true mid-range contenders, I know that this is the pick that will interest many of you guys the most. Uh, it's probably also the one that will get fanboys scrambling for the dislike button if they don't happen to agree with me. Anyway, not at all concerned with that, let's get to it. Not beating around the bush, the 3GB GTX 1060 gets wiped out by the RX 480 4GB as the Radeon GPU was faster in our latest benchmark session. Meanwhile, the 4GB 480 was just 5% slower than the 8GB model while costing a little over 15% less. Worse still for Nvidia, the 4GB 480 was just 2% slower than the 6GB 1060 despite costing around 20% less. Since day one, we've been recommending the 4GB RX 480 over the more expensive 8GB model, and we're yet to discover a playable scenario where the 8GB model provides better performance. For example, when using our 8GB AMD reference card, which can be limited to a 4GB buffer using a custom BIOS, we found no difference in performance between running the card with a 4GB or 8GB memory buffer. And yes, we also looked at frame time performance. Anyway, if you think that spending the extra money now means that the RX 480 will be future-proofed, then go for it. Either way, I picked the RX 480 as the best value mid-range performance option. 
for around $400, gamers will run into the GeForce GTX 1070. And for now, this graphics card has no real competition. A bit like a polar bear in a petting zoo, it tears everything else to pieces. Of course, you are paying for those pixels to glide over your screen in perfect harmony. You could argue that the Fury X is a worthy alternative, but for roughly the same price, there are too many shortcomings for me to recommend that product. I'll have a video on this soon, but for now I feel like the more modern GTX 1070 is where your money is best invested. Moving on to something more extreme, we find the GeForce GTX 1080. Um, something like this big beefy sucker from Gigabyte, their Extreme Edition card. And there are some that will argue that the 1080 is really just a mid-range GPU with a high-end price due to a lack of competition, and you know, that may be the case. But the truth is a $300 1080, apart from being awesome for gamers, would probably also see AMD go the way of the Dodo faster than the P10 to 100 time. Regardless of your opinion, there is no changing the fact that upon release eight months ago now, the 1080 smashed it out of the park, delivering 30% more performance than the GTX 980 Ti and Fury X. And if the frame rate performance wasn't impressive enough, the power consumption was sure to blow some socks clean off, as the GTX 1080 consumed no more power than last season's GTX 980, and that there is an incredible leap in efficiency. Having said all that, at a cost of roughly $600 US, the GTX 1080's cost per frame ratio in relation to the mid-range current generation GPUs isn't great. Essentially, you are paying almost 140% more for not quite 70% more performance when compared to the 6GB GTX 1060. Of course, high-end GPUs have always come at a price premium, so this isn't exactly surprising. In any case, if you seek extreme 1440p or even 4K performance, then there really is no better alternative. Hell, right now there is no alternative. So to recap, the picks are as follows. The GeForce GTX 1050 2GB, uh, Radeon RX 474GB, Radeon RX 484GB, GeForce GTX 1070, and the GeForce GTX 1080. Uh, that pretty much makes up the A-team. I think it's fair to say right now the entry-level or mid-range market segment is very competitive, and excluding the GeForce GTX 1050 Ti, there aren't really any poor choices here. As a side note, I should point out that as AMD's previous generation GPUs head out the door, there are some great bargains to be had. Many of you have been pointing to AMD's Radeon Fury, the air-cooled non-X model, and at just shy of $300 US, it does seem like a great buy. That said, the Sapphire Nitro model, which is selling for just under $300 US, is only available in limited quantities, and pricing isn't great everywhere. For example, it's a horrible purchase down under. Anyway, in conclusion, I think it's fair to say it's great seeing such strong competition in the $100 to about $250 price range, and let's really hope AMD can help us out very soon in the high-end market segment, and if it's not too much to us, bring down those prices just a little bit. Um, and yeah, anyway, if you disagree with some of my picks, or perhaps all of them, let me know in the comments section below. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll catch you on the next one.